And joining us right now, as he often does at this time on Mondays when we're lucky, is Joe DeGeneva, former U.S. Attorney to the District of Columbia. Hello, Joe. Hello, Larry. Well, I want to start by talking about your successor, uh, U.S. Attorney Machen, who is uh, leaving office, uh, leaving his position, but not before he decides to give Lois Lerner a complete and total pass on the contempt of Congress charge. Of course, that charge was uh, voted on by the House of Representatives, as is their uh, constitutional uh, right to do. And it was based on the fact that she gave this opening statement before she pled the fifth, where she uh, pled her innocence, and she she did she went through a whole bunch of stuff. Trey Gowdy has listed it all of these statements of fact that she made. Machen says, I think Joe, and I'm sorry for making such a long question, but I want to get this out of the way. He said that just by pl- claiming innocence and uh, denying the charges, she wasn't violating her uh, Fifth Amendment. What do you say to that? Well, I disagree with Ron. Uh, I like Ron. I think he's a good guy, but this is a big mistake. Uh, there's no doubt that she waived her Fifth Amendment privilege. There's just no question about it. Uh, there's, some, there's a little bit of case law on this thing about saying you're innocent, but she did much more than that because she also turned over documents uh, prior to that hearing. and She was also interviewed by the Department of Justice without taking the Fifth. Um, I think this was a decision that would have been better served by presenting it to the grand jury and letting the grand jury decide. But they didn't do that, and uh, they're going to have to live with that because uh, inevitably this case is not going to go away. And, and that's because down the road, if there's a new president uh, in 2017, the statute of limitation on all this will not have run out, and I can assure you it's going to be pursued one way or the other. One quick follow-up. You said the uh, statute of limitation on all of this. I mean, we know... Apparently, there's an FBI investigation into this, so whatever uh, potential criminal wrongdoing that uh, Lois Lerner and her gang over there at the IRS uh, perpetrated, that's still happening. But is, this, is the, is the uh, contempt ch- of Congress charge still pending if a new U.S. No. attorney comes no, in? No, no, that's, that's different. And that raises a much more interesting note. That, that's over. Uh, that's but here's what's There's nothing else with that. All right. The Senate has a special statute where it actually goes to court and enforces its contempt citations in civil proceedings in federal court. The House does not have that statute. Why they don't have it, I don't know. Back in the 90s when when Victoria and I were investigating the Teamsters, we recommended that the House adopt such a statute. They didn't do so, and they are regretting it to this day. Uh, it's, It's just amazing how incompetent the Republicans have been in this area of investigation. Hey, Joe, question for you on this, uh, Stan Bongino. What, a, what about the possibility of, of giving Lerner immunity in this and enforcing her under a, in a, you know, the administrative portion of her job requirements at the IRS to testify? I know, you know when I was in the Secret Service, you have you know, a legal obligation. Of course, you have your Fifth Amendment rights. But if it's administrative only, you, you have to, you know, you're compelled to speak. What's the problem with that? Well, she already has spoken to the Department of Justice, according to her lawyer. She's already given extensive interviews and has waived her Fifth Amendment privilege, certainly in that arena. But uh, she could be given immunity right now by Congress and forced to testify, because once you're granted immunity, you cannot not testify. Um, the, by the way, the ongoing investigation of her at the, and the IRS thing is not really an investigation. That involves that woman, Barbara Bosserman, a right. longtime uh, Democratic operative who is a so-called career person in the Civil Rights Division. That investigation is a Potemkin village. It's an absolute joke. But she can be forced to testify if they grant her immunity, and Congress may decide to do that. They may circle back now and try to force her that way. I only say that, too, Joe, because for as angry as I am at Lois Lerner and her contempt for the entire process, it seems like this case has so many deeper ramifications, the weaponizing of the IRS, the growth in the bureaucracy, uh, the breakdown of, of, of a civil government, that I'm willing to give up you know, punishment on Lois learner to run this thing to sure. the end and stop it from happening sure. again. I, I don't know what anybody... Well, by the way, I, that's a perfectly good analysis, and I would favor that. There's only one caveat, and it's just because you're granted immunity doesn't mean you're going to tell the truth. Uh, her her yeah. testimony, I'm sure, would be cramped. It would be... She would only answer the specific question answered. She wouldn't volunteer anything. Listen, Lois Lerner was a Democratic operative who started her life at the Federal Election Commission where she tried to do exactly the same thing she did at the IRS, which is go after conservative and Republican groups. She is the worst type of public servant. She is an example of why the so-called career bureaucracy is anything but career. Um, And in her case, I agree with you. I think the real culprit here, believe it or interesting enough, are a series of IRS commissioners who clearly lied under oath in Congress about what they knew about this, and the current IRS commissioner, John Koskinen, who's been contemptuous of Congress both literally and figuratively, 
And, you know, at a certain point, he's, now he's screaming about their defunding the agency. They should cut that budget another 50%. Hmm. And really make them pay. And, and make the American people very happy, because <laughs> yes. without, without that money, there's less audits. Hey, uh, Joe DeGeneva, let me shift over to a couple of other stories. First, we, we just uh, spoke about this, and it's really starting to get some traction. This new policy of the U.S. government, State Department, and Homeland Security. We're going to fly down to Central America and gather up children of people who are here in the country illegally, many of them, and fly them to their parents to reunite them here in America? This is apparently the president's solution to that border crisis we saw with the kids last year. Is that even legal? Can they do that? And what can Congress do? Well, they can legally they can do that. I mean, they have the right to what's called parole people into the United States. Uh, the, the admission policy of the country is almost entirely discretionary, except for people with the serious criminal backgrounds. Uh, yes, they can do this. Uh, should they be doing it? Absolutely not. Family reunification is a great idea, but it's only a great idea when the people who come here initially come legally. What they are doing is they are corrupting the process of immigration by making illegality irrelevant. Uh, they are saying that everybody who comes to the United States is the same, no matter how they get here. That is nonsense. That makes a mockery of all those people from India and China and elsewhere trying to get into the United States by applying legally at U.S. embassies and waiting in line. This is such a disgrace to the rule of law. But this administration doesn't care about the rule of law. They care about the rule of Obama. This is all about doing what they want to do and the law be damned. The most lawless, most unaccountable, most non-transparent administration in the 20th and 21st century. Well, I definitely agree with you there, Joe. Does this, uh, I, I think it's in the Fifth Circus. Is that, does the case in the Fifth Circuit, the immigration case against DAPA and DACA, th- is that going to impact this at all? It can. It can, depending upon what the courts decide. The courts are going to give great deference to the administration in terms of their discretion. But there's only so far they can go. I think the real Achilles heel here for the administration is that it wasn't just that he used so-called prosecutorial discretion not to deport people. That's one thing. But what he did was he went ahead and granted them substantive rights under benefits laws. And that's where he's going to lose. They are going to rule, ultimately, that he does not have the authority to grant those benefits. Granting benefits has nothing to do with prosecutorial discretion. Mm -hmm. He therefore acted illegally, and they're going to rescind his actions. I have no doubt that the reason the Fifth Circuit is taking so long deciding these stay questions and everything is because this is really a serious question. Yeah. And they, they made a big mistake when they granted the benefits. Uh, Joe DeGeneva, real fast, we're about to talk about it, so I, wanted, I don't want to wait a week to get your take on it. Rand Paul set to announce for the presidency tomorrow. What do you make of the senator of Kentucky? Uh, I, was, I assumed he was going to do it sooner or later. He is a, he is it's a the family business, after all. <laughs> he's a fascinating guy. He's a libertarian conservative. He speaks to young people of all stripes. It's really interesting, both even some liberal kids like this guy. Yep. Uh, he's different. He's a little strange, but he's actually right for the moment. All right, Joe DeGeneva, thanks for that, and good thanks, talking Joe. to you. We'll talk to you next week, I hope. Well, great, guys. Take care.